Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a video to show you how to upgrade your gaming laptop with NVMe storage. Now, these little drives are ultra fast SSD drives that are useful for putting your games on, but also installing Windows if you're so inclined. It sees your operating system and games boot faster, load faster, and generally leads to a better experience. I did a previous video on how to do this, and the things you'll need are an anti static wrist strap a screwdriver and the NVMe drive. Here I'm using the Evo 970 from Samsung. Now this process is relatively easy if you have the right gear. So uh, if you have a laptop that has a spare M2 NVMe port on it, then this is ideal for you. Now the first thing you need to do is check the specifications from your manufacturer to ensure that's the case. Here I'm using an old ASUS laptop I have that's probably about three years old. It actually has an NVMe drive in it already as the boot drive and a large terabyte hard drive as a secondary drive, but it also has space for another NVMe drive. Now, opening up the underneath, you get to see this. So you can, this is another option if you can't find the specifications. You'll see on the left hand side the standard SSD drive, and the bottom middle is the covering for the NVMe drives, just a heat shield that's really easy to remove. Now in this process you'll see the other NVMe drive. It would be theoretically possible to swap that out and put a new one in. So you could. However, it is my Windows drive so I would need to reinstall Windows and all that. However, it doesn't mean that you could upgrade to a larger capacity NVMe drive and then have another one. So you could have two NVMe drives, maybe a terabyte each, one for Windows, one for games. That would be a pretty good way to breathe new life into your gaming laptop. Obviously you can also upgrade your standard hard disk drive and even add small RAM during this process as well if you really wanted to beef up your machine and it's a good way to breathe new life into an otherwise old aging gaming machine make sure it leads you loads of pressure in future so the first step of the process is obviously remove that back plate unscrew these little screws and take that cover off and then you get access make sure to keep the screws in close proximity and to wear the anti-static wrist strap during the process so you don't end up frying stuff by accident so underneath the cover here, you can see the slot, spare slot for the SSD drive. It's clearly marked M2, PCIe only. You'll also note the one above, the standard solid state drive that's installed. I believe that's 250 gigabytes. The Evo 970 that I'm installing is 500 gig, but I also have a terabyte drive. And I think you can get up to two terabyte drives as a maximum. They're quite expensive though, at the moment. But you know, a 500 gig or a terabyte drive is an affordable way to really beef up your system. And they're so easy to install, much easier than plat R drives or standard SSDs, because you basically just need to plug them in and screw them down. And here, I'm going to show you that process. It really is dead simple. You just need to line up the ports in the right way and then plug it in. You cannot put these in the wrong way around either, because of the way they're designed. You can see that the pins that connect on it are set up in a specific way so it's literally impossible to put them in the wrong way around although it does look like it's upside down based on the label uh, comparing with the top one but it isn't I can assure you that isn't the right way around and then you just need to screw it down you need an M2 screw obviously for this process now they're not included in the box with the NVMe drive from Samsung and they probably aren't with other manufacturers as well um, you can buy them online separately though so it's not a major problem and if you've got a gaming PC, you also find them usually in the motherboard box. So the next step is just to screw that drive down and make sure it's nice and tight and in place. Um, it is a fiddly process. Those little screws are a pain and I managed to drop mine all over the shop. After you've done that, then replace the heat shield and re-screw that in. Make sure that's nice and tight and secure. Keep everything nice and protected. It's also worth noting there are no warranty seals on here, so I wouldn't get in trouble for making these changes to the device for them to claim on a warranty, although they might notice. <laughs> Once you've done that, it's basically it. It's a really easy installation process. The next stage is basically just booting into Windows and checking that the drive's there, then installing the relevant uh, software. So uh, Samsung has its own special SSD magician software, and other manufacturers have other similar stuff so you can see now booting into windows also note how chunky and old my laptop is it's not a new laptop so you might be surprised to find an mvme spare slot in your machine 
that you didn't even know you had. Or, like I said, if you have NVMe already, there's always the option of swapping out the original drive for a larger one, a faster one, a larger and faster one. And then it's a really easy process. Potentially reinstall Windows and get a fresh install of Windows and just make your machine much faster and more efficient. So once you get into Windows, you open up the File Explorer and you might find the drive isn't showing, which is exactly what happened to me. So you can see the original operating system drive and the standard Platter hard drive both full or near enough. So if you go up into the top here, you'll see under the main thing, you can click Manage and that will open up the drive manager where you can then go and have a look at the disk management and make some adjustments. You can also find this by searching in Windows. You press the Windows key and then if you type to create drive partition, I think, yeah, create uh, hard disk partitions, that opens up the same thing. It sounds scary, but it doesn't really need to be a partition necessarily. Once you've done that, you then can open disk management, as I said, and then you just need to look and find the relevant drive. And hopefully it should have appeared in there if everything went smooth, everything went smooth and you didn't destroy it in the installation process. And you'll see here, here it is, unallocated, is black, it doesn't have a name, there's nothing to it. Basically all you need to do is assign that a letter um, by creating a new simple volume this talks you through the process. You're basically signing out a letter and making sure it's got the right space on it. And then that completes. And then you have your new window with a completely empty drive on it. And if you go back to the main drive, you'll see here the new volume has appeared and you can rename it wherever you want so you know what it is. And that's it. As you can see, a really easy installation process and well worth doing. This has been the Perfect Prawn. Thanks for watching.